I'm Alessandro Rogora, full professor in building technology at the Polytechnic di Milano and I also teach in the Meisting of Lighting Design uh, in the Polytechnic di Milano too. Well, actually, I start my experience as an energy consultant in the same period when I was a student and I, I finally became an architect. Um, the theme of my thesis was focused on the, the energy problems and on the bioclimatic approach in building design. And so it was quite easy for me to start working as a professional architect and working with my colleagues. I mean, they asked me uh, information and they utilized me somehow to help them in, in making the appropriate use of energy in buildings. So my, my love with energy comes from the very, very beginning of my um, experience as a student and the love with light came a little bit later. So, uh, at the end I start learning and studying lighting in my PhD thesis and the idea was to, I mean, go a little bit more in depth with architecture and of course energy and architecture are strongly related so buildings are designed in order to uh, use properly energy but of course a great architecture, the one uh, designed by our, our master architects in the world is strongly focused on light. And so at the end of my um, student career uh, I, went to, I went to Finland first, uh, I went to Spain later and finally I start studying my PhD for my PhD and the theme of the PhD was uh, daylighting in architecture. So I mean uh, the, the relationship between light and architecture that's so strong, so important, was studied for, I had the opportunity to study for four years about, more or less, and I'm, I'm very happy to have had these possibilities, because light is so important for architecture that a, a real architecture can't be without natural lighting as well as with artificial lighting nowadays. Well, the role of lighting in the design of buildings and in the design of spaces is more than important. I mean, it's strategic, it's basic. Um, if we listen to the words of great architects of the past, like Louis Kahn, for example, Miss van der Rohe, Le Corbusier, they both, all of them focus their attention on lighting in spacing. Uh, in spaces. No, uh, we, we receive uh, the most information uh, through vision, that means through light, and visual perception is so important that an architect can't, I mean, um, he has to study lighting deeply. On the contrary, he will never be able to properly communicate uh, his or her architecture. So I think it's ab absolutely strategic and unfortunately in our course of studies the theme of lighting design, both natural and artificial, is not central, is not so important, is only, let's say, uh, maybe you have a little bit of time to study and not all the students can do it. So we have few courses on the theme and at the end of the career only few students are able to manage properly light. Uh, curiosity first. I mean, to be curious, to want to learn and to, to want to study and to want to give new information, new, new solution in architecture. So the attempt to, uh, to find out something new, because to play with light is it's a, it's like to play a game. And to play, to play a game uh, requires absolutely your attention, your desire, your curiosity. And most of the students, most of the professionals are very good in techniques in technical solution, but they miss the art of lighting. The art of lighting means uh, the will to do something new, to communicate with people. Uh, I think that the project of light is a project of information, it's a project to communicate, to understand and to say something to people that are looking at it. So curiosity mainly. So for sure curiosity is absolutely important for a lighting designer. Uh, of course, technical themes, technical skills are important and basic, but I consider more than this one, or at least after this one, you have 
to, to be curious, to be a good lighting designer. My figure, uh, my professional uh, skill is a little bit different from the conventional one. So I mainly studied uh, natural lighting, even if uh, I made some, of course, uh, works about artificial lighting, lighting of monuments, lighting of uh, buildings and so on, but mainly I'm focused on natural lighting. So um, I think that the use of lighting is not very well managed by professionals. So at the moment, um, the work in the architectural field uh, is not so much and uh, every professional try to survive but for sure they need to have technical figures, technical person studying light and able to manage uh, the problem of artificial lighting as well as to understand how natural lighting ends the building and gives the possibility to, to make activities is absolutely strategic. So we, have, we are a little bit on the back compared with other, with other countries, with our the other experiences like in North America, like in the United Kingdom, as well as in the north of the European Union. But of course, we have to consider that in the Mediterranean area, we have more light, but it's a little bit more problematic to manage it because of course, uh, we have sun, and the sun moves, it's not like uh, the sky balls that emit natural lighting, so it's a little bit more complicated, and the same for artificial lighting. I mean, a building in the Mediterranean area should be lighted in a different way, both considering artificial as well as natural. And of course, we have, we have night everywhere, and uh, our activities are not limited by the sunrise and sunset like it was in the 18th or 19th century at the very beginning. But uh, I think it's absolutely strategic. So we have to prepare good professional for manage properly lighting. We have to. Okay, uh, as I told you at the beginning, uh, the importance of the master light, the master of lighting and light design, in, uh, it's given by the, let's say, low attention given to lighting in the School of Architecture, both in Italy and, and in Milan. I mean, uh, I consider this a limit, because for a professional it's very important to, to manage properly lighting. And of course you can manage properly lighting from the technical point of view, uh, you can study books, uh, learn on books or physics, let's say, and at the end of the, of the master the students are very good in technical skills, but also the, the theme of considering the, and evaluating the relationship between humans that live in spaces and the light is considered strategic and basic. And for me, that's the main important element of the master, of course, technical skill, of course, but also the ability to consider properly these relationships. To have the possibility to, uh, to play with light, uh, for uh, one here, with some other colleagues, with technical coming from different experiences, uh, other lighting designers, professional architects, uh, uh, let's say teacher like me, uh, professor, and uh, also working or having contact with industry is strategic. Uh, I mean, to prepare uh, um, a professional, to prepare both a lighting designer that can open a his or her own office, as well as to give uh, his or hers a possibility to work in a team that's strategic nowadays. Okay. Many thanks.